Now that we have all our walls in place, it's time to create the roof for our building. As we've done with the other floors, we need to create a separate design layer for the roof. Instead of going to Tools, Organization, and clicking the Design Layers tab, we'll use the shortcut found in the View bar to the left of the Active Layer drop-down menu. Highlight the Design Layer, Floor 2, and click the New button in order to create the new layer above the highlighted layer. Name the new layer Roof. Make sure the option Edit Properties After Creation is checked and click OK. In the Edit Design Layers dialog box, set the Elevation field to 22 feet 8 inches and the Layer Wall Height field to 2 inches. Once these parameters are set, click OK. Next, in the Organization dialog box, set Floor 1, Foundation, Footing, Scan 1, and Scan 2 design layers to Invisible. Additionally, make Floor 2 the active design layer, then click OK to return to the drawing area. We'll base the roof we're creating on the existing exterior walls from Floor 2. In order to create the correct roof profile shape, the exterior walls must create a closed shape. Therefore, we'll need to temporarily place a wall in this area so that the walls create a closed shape. To do this, select the Wall tool. Then from the toolbar, choose Virtual Wall from the Wall Styles drop-down menu. Next, click this wall intersection and draw a vertical wall by holding the Shift key and clicking once you reach the wall below to create the virtual wall. Now we can create the roof profile from these walls. Select the Polygon tool from the Basic Tool Palette and choose Outer Boundary Mode. With your mouse button depressed, circle the main portion of this building but exclude the small triangular room in the bottom right, as shown here. Release your mouse button once you've reached your starting point or have completely circled the building. Notice in the Object Info Palette a polygon has been created from the walls. Click the Fill Style color in the Attributes palette to set the polygon's color to a shade of light gray that's to your liking. Next, we need to offset the roof so that it sits on the interface of the wall. For this, we'll use the Offset tool in the Basic Tool palette. In the toolbar, choose Offset by Distance mode and Offset Original Object mode. Also, set the Distance field to 10 inches. Click anywhere inside the selected polygon to offset the shape by 10 inches. If you have any extraneous points in the polygon after creating the offset, please see the PDF version of this Getting Started guide for steps on how to remove these points. Now that the roof shape is complete, we need to create a few smaller portions of the roof. First, switch to the Selection tool and delete the virtual wall we created previously. Also, you can select the polygon we've just drawn and move it to the roof layer. After you select the polygon, choose Roof from the Layer drop-down menu in the Object Info palette. Additionally, let's choose Roof from the Active Layer drop-down menu in the View bar to make it the active layer. Now, you can choose the Polygon tool from the Basic Tool palette, but this time, switch to the first mode, Vertex mode, in the toolbar. Create a triangle by clicking on these three points in the order shown. Click once more on the start point to create the polygon. We also need to create a roof from the room in the bottom right portion of the building. To do this, we'll use the polygon tool in the second mode, inner boundary mode. Now, make floor tool the active design layer in the navigation palette. Then just click inside these three walls to create the polygon. With the polygon selected, change the layer menu in the object info palette to roof. To create the last section of the roof, you need to make floor 1 visible. As you can see, there are two areas where the circular walls extend past the current roof. Therefore, we'll need to create two more polygons for the roof in this area. First, select the Arc tool from the Basic Tool Palette. Also choose the second mode in the toolbar, Three Points Mode. When you see the cursor cue Object Slash Object, click at the point where the vertical wall and the round wall intersect. 
Your next click can be anywhere along the inside edge of the round wall. Then click on the opposite end of the curve. Once you see the cursor cue object slash object to create the arc. Set the fill for this arc to none in the attributes palette. Now select the line tool in the basic tool palette and click on both endpoints of the arc you've just drawn. You'll know you've successfully snapped the endpoint when you see the cursor cue arc end. You'll need to combine these two objects to create a polyline. To do this, hold the shift key and select both the line and the arc. The object info palette should display two objects. Then go to modify, compose. After completing this operation, the object info palette should now display polyline. Now simply use these steps to create the same polyline over the remaining portion of the round wall. After converting these objects, hold the shift key to select both. Change the polyline's fill style from none to solid in the attributes palette. Hold the shift key and then select the two other polygons with a white fill. Then, click the fill style color to set the polygon's color to the same shade of gray that you applied to the larger polygon. Now it's time to convert these polygons and polylines into roof faces. To start, make the Design Layer Roof the active layer in the Navigation Palette. Then, select the largest polygon that covers the main building. Go to AEC, Roof Face. In the Create Roof Face dialog box, choose Rise Over Run for the roof slope. Also, choose Vertical for the Edge Miter and Hole Miter. Additionally, input the following values negative 24 inches for the axis Z field, 0 inches for the rise field, 1 inch for the run field, and 4 inches for the thickness field. Then click OK. Next, we need to draw a line that defines the roof's slope. So click anywhere inside the polygon and move your cursor downward while holding the shift key. When the cursor cue vertical appears, click to complete the line. You should now see a black arrow displayed with the line. This arrow indicates which side of the object will be the raised side of the roof. Move your cursor to the right of the line so that the arrow points in this direction as well. Then click again. The arrow should turn blue, which indicates that the roof face is complete. Again, notice in the object info palette that the object is now displayed as a roof face. Let's make the triangular polygon in the bottom right area to a roof face as well. Select the polygon, and then again go to AEC Roof Face. In the Create Roof Face dialog, all of the parameters we set previously should have been retained, so all you need to do is click OK. To create the roof axis line, draw a vertical line along the right edge of the polygon. Once you draw this axis line, Move your cursor to the right of the line so that the black arrow also points to the right, then click to complete the roof face. Now, select the triangular polygon to the left of the main building. Once again, go to AEC, Roof Face. This will actually be the porch roof for the entrance of the building, so it will require different parameters from the other two roof faces. In the Create Roof dialog box, Set the axis Z field to negative 14 feet 2 inches, the rise field to 7 eighths of an inch, the run field to 1 inch, and the thickness field to 8 inches. Then click OK. To draw the roof axis line, move your cursor without clicking to the bottom left corner of the polygon. The cursor cue endpoint should be displayed. Hover your cursor there until the smart point is acquired when a red box appears around the point. Then move your cursor upward. As you do this, you should see a green extension line appear along with the cursor cue Align H. Once you have a little space between your cursor and the smart point, click to start the roof axis line. Continue moving your cursor upward while holding the shift key. When the cursor cue Vertical appears, click to complete the roof axis line. Then click again, making sure that the black arrow is pointing to the right of the roof axis line. 
to create this roof face. Last, with the last roof face selected, set the angle field in the object info palette to 41.19 degrees to get a more drastic slope. The two polylines that cover the round wall will also be porch roofs. So, select one of these polylines and go to AEC Roof Face. In the Create Roof Face dialog, set the axis Z field to negative 13 feet. Also, set the rise field to zero, the run field to one inch, and the thickness field to four inches. Then click OK. Now draw the roof axis line along the straight wall that shares an edge with the polyline. Next, set the black arrow so that it sits to the right of the roof axis line. Repeat these steps for the other polyline that covers the round wall and you're done. If they're not already visible, make design layers floor 1, floor 2, and roof the only visible layers and render in OpenGL. Then use the flyover tool to see what we've done. As you're flying over your building, you should see that since you've made a parapet roof, the top of the interior walls from floor 2 are showing through the roof. We can fix this quickly with a select similar tool. To do this, first make floor 2 the active layer. Change the layer options drop down menus to show snap other. This way, only the objects from Floor 2 can be selected and or modified. Next, switch to the Select Similar tool in the Basic Tool Palette. Also click the Select Similar Preferences button in the toolbar. Since we only want the interior walls to be selected, check the option Wall Style, uncheck the option Class, and click OK. With the Select Similar tool still active, Click any one of the interior walls protruding through the roof. After clicking one of these interior walls, all of them will be selected. Now in the Object Info Palette, simply input 10 feet in the Height field and press Enter to lock in the value. All the interior walls should now be below your roof. If there are any interior walls that still show above the roof, simply select them and change their height to 10 feet in the Object Info Palette, as we just did here. Now you're done with the roofs, and we can return to a top plan view.